Hello everyone, welcome back to another Deck Tech on the YouTube channel. Today we're going over Is It Dragons? In fact, they are dragons, but this deck is one of the cool new decks. I got a lot of support from Alchemy. The dragons got two big cards. So the first card we're going to talk about is Fearsome Whelp. Fearsome Whelp is one in red. It's a dragon, one, one flying. At the beginning of your instep, each dragon in your hand perpetually gains this card cost one less to cast. This card is actually a huge get for the deck because it allows you to play a lot of bigger cards and actually be able to curve out still and not skip the early turns or have some weird kind of more clunky draws. And if this thing ever sticks on the board, it gives you actually a huge mana advantage. In fact, if this thing gets two dragons in your hand, it's paid itself back on mana and then often eats a card from your opponent as well. So Fearsome Whelp, if it gets one trigger off, is actually just a huge powerhouse and heaven forbid you ever get two. The other big dragon they got is the Town Razor Tyrant. Town Razor Tyrant is two red red for a creature dragon 4-4 four, four, with flying. When it ETBs, you choose a land your opponent controls and then it loses all abilities except mana abilities, which is a nice little piece of interaction for stuff like his content in Historic, for example, or maybe a Faceless Haven in Alchemy. And then it says at the beginning of your upkeep, that permanent deals two damage to its controller unless they sacrifice it. So basically every upkeep, they either lose two life or lose a land. This is actually great. Uh, when you accelerate this out with a Fearsome Whelp, you're actually really throwing your opponent off and their curve becomes much harder, especially if you're on the play. The Fearsome Whelp into this is actually just a huge, like, powerhouse curve and even if that whelp gets answered on the subsequent turn you only got one activation of it you're probably able to play another dragon or a big card after this and you don't need much more than a 4-4 flyer to actually end the game of magic these days so town razor tyrant is one of the better cards we've actually seen from the alchemy set in my opinion the flash is not the best but a complete and total serviceable role player this deck is looking to kind of take advantage of the Fearsome Whelp. So we're playing Moonvale Regent, Ilmrath, Desert Doom, and Goldspan Dragon as our other dragons. The deck is a little dragon heavy, but we have a bunch of interaction in order to get to those dragons. So really you're kind of playing this disruptive mid-range game plan that we've seen from blue-red decks in the past before they kind of became Alrun piles. So you're gonna see Fading Hope, Divide by Zero, Dragon's Fire. These are kind of the cards to help us bridge towards our dragons and clear the way for our dragons once the dragons are down. You're really just trying to get a dragon in play and then kind of go from there. We have two Magda in the deck. Uh, this is a little bit of an awkward thing. You can search up a dragon, which is kind of cool and flavorful, and so we love that from a flavor standpoint. But it's also just another way to cheat out a dragon in this deck. And I think having a couple more ways to accelerate our mana and maybe open some double spell options is kind of good. So while I don't love Magda in the list, I think she's kind of a necessary role player for this style of Is It Dragons. Um, the deck also gets access to one last card that's quite powerful before we can talk about why you played this over maybe just got dragons uh, and that's expressive iteration expressive iteration is one of the more powerful cards we've actually seen released in the last couple of years even in the comparison to some of the horizon sets and expressive iteration is just this form of raw card advantage and just lets you dig and kind of take over games and this deck it's a little weaker than it would be in other decks because what we do have a decent amount of different ways to clear the path and you know get removal spells answered we do have a bunch of clunky dragons. So you're only playing two, that's more of a concession to the fact that you can't really double spell off this very much. And very often we're kind of playing it to like set up a turn for the dragon or in the late game, we have a little bit of excess mana and now we're getting like, you know, a dragon and maybe another way to clear the way. So expressive iteration, kind of great in this deck. Um, one of the all-stars for sure. This deck in comparison to decks like Jeskai Dragons is a little bit cleaner on the mana base and a little bit better at kind of executing that single game plan of, hey, present some threats, protect them, win the game. That sort of game plan is, I think, underappreciated from people who are playing Jeskai, um, and that is kind of why we're playing this deck. One last thing to note about this deck before we go to the sideboard is I have made a little bit of a budgetary concession to this deck at first. Um, I have the Forsaken Crossroads not in the main deck. Instead, I have Temple of the Dragon Queen. Temple of the Dragon Queen enters the battlefield. You reveal a dragon from your hand, and this card will tap for the mana of the chosen color that you choose when you reveal a dragon. So this is a lot like the Forsaken Crossroads. Forsaken Crossroads, I think, has been quite good for me so far, but I'm not in love with it. Um, that being said, I think this card's quite strong and you could very easily swap those two. So when you see the deck list in Exportable, you're going to see Forsaken Crossroads. That's kind of there, but just know that you can put the Temple of the Dragon Queen in your deck and it will be, you know, still totally fine and serviceable. Forsaken Crossroads is good, but 
it's hard to want to craft some rare lands. You know, you already had to do so many for this deck, and you just kind of want to play with the cards. On to the sideboard. We have the three uh, lessons that we see with every deck that plays Divide by Zero, and it's blue, Teach Their Cake, Environmental Science, and Mascot Commission. Cards that are good there are good here. We have a couple cards for different aggro decks, kind of trying to pick the spots where we switch our answers in our main deck for cards in our sideboard. So, Cinderclasm is for the go wide white decks of the world. We have a couple of braids for people that are kind of playing some chunkier decks or artifact heavy things. Maybe something like Mono Green. Uh, we have Negates for the non creature strategy. And then we have Burning Hands for the Mono Green decks. Uh, this is kind of just. We're going to take some removal from our main deck that isn't kind of lining up as well as we would like against those decks and kind of do a little swap. That's sort of the game plan. That's why you're going to see three negates. That way you can do stuff like take out your dragon fire. Just will have one in against the control decks. Typically that's fine-ish because they'll have something like a leer that you can tag with it. Um, and then you have three negates to swap for those. And your divide by zero's fading hopes do a pretty good job of actually, you know, still finding ways to be valuable in those games. And then for control decks, we play Inferno of the Star Mounts. Uh, the control decks have been kind of awkward. I'm not in love with this plan, but I think it has been pretty good. So basically, this card's just, you know, a counterspell hate card. It's very big and kills them very quickly, which you might expect from a card like this when you see it. But uh, that's kind of all there is to it. You have that plus negates. And so, you know, what I've been doing is I trim uh, the three dragon fires like we mentioned. I normally keep one in because of the Lear, but they had no creatures and feel free to cut the fourth one. And then I cut the Magdas because I found the Magdas not actually be that good. And I leave in the Fading Hopes because I find that I can very easily play a dragon and unsummon it. So kind of awkward, but it works out pretty well. And this kind of deck, I think it just struggles against control decks in general. So if you want to play more negates or more uh, disdainful strokes, you could do that sort of thing. But I've opted to do this kind of route and it's just way cooler too so that's always some points there thank you so much for watching this video on the youtube channel make sure to like and subscribe and check out the video tomorrow to see some gameplay for this deck and if you're in the future just click the little link to go watch the deck tech we'll see you all tomorrow for another alchemy historic or modern video